So, you know, anytime you're inspecting a vehicle, you always want to look for leaks, right? right. But when you find right. a leak, you always want to inspect above the leak and see where the culprit actually is. You know, Sam, one thing that I've learned, I'm older, and the older you get, you have a lot more leaks. <laughs> Welcome to Sam's Garage, presented by NH Oil Undercoating. This episode of Sam's Garage, the low card team is back with their throttle cable kit for drag racing applications. Sam and Doug showcased their new project this season. Phil brings his 72 Cutlass to the garage for some new upgrades in all the right places. And Sam has big plans for a friend's Fox Body Mustang. Low car performance is at Sam's garage to demo their throttle cable mounting bracket with return spring. The kit includes short and long brackets to allow the use of different throttle stops and cable styles. There is no doubt this kit will ensure drivers will always see green lights on the Christmas tree. I'm Jeff Walls. I'm the Chief Strategy Officer at Low Car. Part of the family business, one of the things we do, we drag race. Awesome. So the next few episodes, we're going to be showing you guys some of the cool products that Low Car has developed for you drag racers. A lot of safety parts out there and a lot of things that allows you to go out there and race and be noticeable, like the dial indicators on the back of these cars. It's going to be a great few episodes, so make sure you guys stay tuned. We're going to get started with what on this one? We're going to hook up our throttle bracket linkage system. Helps you run either a throttle stop or just make sure your throttle cable is much more stable and in line and set up for you every time you make a pass. You're gonna run an index class and if you're gonna run 890 or 990 index and super gas, super comp, you're gonna need a throttle stop. And now you're allowed to have throttle enhancers where all you have to focus on is a reaction time and you don't have to worry about trying to get your pedal to the floor for a pro tree at least. So if you don't mind, can you go ahead and lift this up? We've got the bolts off the carburetor already. Leave the fuel lines on. We're gonna go straight up. We're gonna slip this in here. We've got our gasket ready and everything. And we can run this linkage either way. So this carburetor's set up to run the linkage straight down the car there. You can go ahead and set her down and line that up and we'll bolt this baby down and okay. we'll start adding the brackets. Awesome. If you're running without a throttle enhancer or a throttle stop, we have a short bracket that you can put here. We're gonna run the long bracket and that's gonna give you the distance to run that linkage farther back and support the throttle cable this far away. People are hanging brackets off the sides of carburetors. This one's supported by the carburetor being bolted down itself. Prevents anything from bending, breaking, or twisting. You know, you put a lot of PSI into that cylinder having to close the blades of that th throttle on its own, you know. So to do that as quick and as consistent as you want, you need something to support it. And that's what happens here. A lot of those kits, they don't come with all the parts you need. You have to buy them in pieces. This, everything's included in the kit. So the good thing about this is you can actually adjust the spring pressure with the return springs that we have here. And that's what's going to close the throttle body. Yeah. Right. So even though that's a push-pull cable for emergency type situations, mm -hmm. this will give you your pedal feel. When we run a double loop spring, it gives enough power to pull back these heavier blades. These engines have enough draw through the intake. It'll suck those blades wide open, top into the track. People don't have anything to pull that back. Are you serious? It'll leave it wide open on someone and they don't really know it. So That's not good. It's even a That's safety not good. <laughs> This attachment point and the attachment point here, this is actually a little bit lower. So the attachment point has to be a higher because it actually goes into an arc. Mm -hmm. You can't get wide open throttle if it's even. If the two points are even because it actually goes in an arc, about seven eighths throttle, you can't get any more because you can't pull straight. We also make these kits for your 4150 style carburetors for your street cars. So 
while you may not be running a throttle enhancer that you're trying to stabilize at this distance, it's still good to stabilize your throttle cables, your kickdown and cruise control cables feeding into that whole system so that everything travels through the correct arcs, the correct paths. That's a really cool product, Jeff. Now this is gonna give you safety and consistency, right? Absolutely, and yes. holds everything together and looks good too. Let's see what it looks like with the hood on there. Right. That looks pretty nice. Now we're gonna be taking the hood back off of it because we're gonna be installing more low car performance products on this Traxxer, so join us next week to check us out with low car performance. Sam, that's not a hood, that's a scoop. Whatever, you know what I mean. <laughs>
check the blinkers, check the flashers, check all the bulbs, brake light. We did find that the emergency flasher itself on this car is bad. So we got a new flasher for the emergency and a flasher for the turn signals. Next week, we're gonna start tackling the maintenance on this and getting it back up to par. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. As your vehicle gets older, you may hear a roar at some point. And that roar could be one of two things. Either lack of rotation, you cup your tires, take your hands and run them across the tires and make sure they're nice and smooth. If they're not, they're going to be cupped, it's going to cause a roar. If it's not your tires, all four are smooth and you have a roar, it's going to be a wheel bearing. And the wheel bearing, believe it or not, will actually transfer the sound through the car. If the left front is bad, it could be the right rear you're hearing. The best way to diagnose a wheel bearing is going to be to grab the coil spring at whatever corner you think that is and turn the wheel. You should feel nothing on the coil spring, nothing. If you feel anything on the coil spring, that bearing is bad. If you feel like the noise is traveling, just take a second, jack up the car, check the bearings by simply turning the wheel, make sure you're in neutral, get a good spin on it, grab the spindle, the coil, anything that's attached to the wheel bearing, and if you feel anything, that wheel bearing is bad, that way you've done your own diagnosis, go to the shop, have them fix your repair. Bill Pataki from Car Capsules brought a 72 Olds Cutlass 442 convertible to Sam's Garage for a few upgrades. They'll be replacing the engine, upgrading the chassis components, installing bigger brakes, as well as beefing up the fuel and cooling systems. Once completed, Phil may have a hard time keeping this muscle car in a capsule. You guys know Phil Pataki from Car Capsule, you know the good looking one that works there. I got him here this season, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. He's got his 1972 Olds Convertible 442, and we're going to be doing an engine swap, complete chassis, suspension upgrade, brake upgrade, fuel, and cooling. Now, this is a nice car. Would it have a 350 in it? It was all stock. It was all original. It was in real good shape. Everything worked, but we just want to upgrade it and, you know, make it a little quicker. We're using an LT1 direct injected Gen 5 GM motor, which is basically a direct injected LS engine. We got a Brian Tooley cam system in it. It's gonna make a lot of horsepower. We've already got the old engine out because you guys have seen that too many times. Now we're ready to put the new engine in. You guys, when you're doing an engine swap, you can make it as easy or hard on yourselves as you want to. When I pull the engine and transmission, I like to vacuum out all the fluids, the radiator, transmission, and the engine. I'll drain it. That way there's no mess on the floor. Now when you're going in with your engine swap, make sure you get quality parts so that it makes it easy easier on you when doing the installation. There's going to be a few times where you may have to take that engine in and out of the engine bay a handful of times. It's okay because you don't want to go back when everything's all connected and hooked up and do it then. Knock it out, get it placed in there. That way when you're moving forward, everything's going to fall into place. And if you guys are doing an engine swap or anytime you're working on your vehicles, you don't really have to have everything dirty as far as your hands go because what happens is that when your hands are dirty and black, you transfer that dirt to everything and every component in the shop. You don't want to do that. So stay clean, do a good job, get your engine swap done perfectly, take your time so that you don't have to do it again. We got a direct injected LT1 Gen 5 in here. I've installed an entire Brian Tooley camshaft kit which includes the DOD delete and everything you need to install that camshaft including the dual valve springs, the retainers, the locks, the push rods, everything, the lifters, even the lifter buckets. So it's going to make some power. That's why we need a transmission that's going to handle that power. And the only person I know that has a 4L60 that's going to handle anything more than 450, 500 horsepower is Performa Built. Ryan and the crew over there, they built Phil a 900 capable horsepower transmission. 4L60, not an 80. That's insane for this transmission. It puts a guarantee behind it as well. Don't forget though, when you guys are doing something like this, you got maintenance. This is not a brand new motor. We've gone through it. It needed a rear main seal. I'm looking at it. I went ahead and replaced it. That way we got no issues. Now I'm ready to go ahead and put transmission in. What I'm going to do now is have Phil get us the Boss Hog torque converter that we're going to be putting in this so that everything stays reliable, handles the power, and gives everybody peace of mind. Now when you guys are installing the transmission, 
There's gonna be times where you may have to take a hammer to the underneath of the body, the trans tunnel. Not a problem, if you need to bang in half an inch, that's okay, you're not gonna hurt anything on the inside. So go ahead and do that, give yourself a lot of clearance on the, over the transmission itself. And then if you're using an aftermarket transmission, torque converter combination, make sure that when you're pulling the torque converter out of the transmission, you only pull it out about 10 thousandths because you want the ear in the pump to be one engage not too far in not too far out because that's going to cause you damage and always remember to use the correct fluid if you got a performance application you want to use a harder fluid softer fluid and a more tame application for the street you want to use a synthetic softer fluid the shifting of the transmission is really all in the fluid viscosity now what i'm going to do is i'm going to call Dwayne over at driveline service of atlanta and get my new drive shaft made well, what do you think, Phil? The LT's installed. That's pretty exciting, isn't it? It is. It looks good. It went pretty smooth. It did go pretty smooth. Yeah. <laughs> With that horsepower we're going to make, it's going to be well worth all the trouble we went through. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. If you guys want to do an engine swap like this or purchase any of the parts that you saw us install today, make sure to go to Summit Racing. Welcome back to Sam's Garage, presented by NHOU. Sam has a friend's Fox Body Mustang in the garage that will be receiving a new Coyote crate engine from Summit Racing. Once the engine is installed, they'll be pairing it up with a new 5-speed transmission from American Powertrain. The icing on the cake will be a new My Calibrator tuner from Livernoy Motorsports. Man, this Fox Body brings back some serious memories. I built a lot of these 20 years ago. I even had one myself. This one belongs to a good friend of mine from high school, Mike Chapani. He's the owner operator of Elite Ceramic Coating and Restoration. He's one of the best detail guys in Georgia. He's been doing it out of Roswell, all the high end cars. This is the one owner Fox Body, it belongs to a good client of mine named Robert. This was an automatic 302 engine. And I've got a Coyote crate engine from Summit Racing that we're going to be installing into this car. In the next three weeks, we're going to be doing the Coyote engine. We're going to do the American Powertrain TKX 5-speed. And then I'm going to finish it all off with the Liverdome Motorsports My Calibrator. This is going to be one awesome ride. All right, so when prepping the Fox body for the Coyote engine, there is a lot you have to do. This is my first one, okay? So I did have to remove the power booster because if you look at a 96 or newer Mustang with the single overhead cam modular engine, you have to go to a Hydro Boost for clearance. So I've got the master out. I gotta do some work before I can get the Hydro Boost back in. Then I went ahead and removed the engine harness from the firewall and I banged in the lip about a half an inch in to clear the secondary runner actuator for the intake manifold. Then what I did was remove all the AC lines and get myself ready for a future vintage air adaption like you guys have seen me do before in previous spots by using new fittings and a new receiver dryer to adapt to the original condenser and the original evaporator core. I used the tubular K member and all QA1 front suspension to make this job really easy. It's an AJE K member. Piso at Power by the Hour, he knocked it out the park by helping me out with the front runner system on this. Everything is very easy to install except for the three aluminum nubs you have to grind down flush so that you can get the power by the hour accessory kit installed. Once you get over that hurdle, everything else is pretty much cake. All right, so we got most everything done under the engine bay. Not really, about 50%, but I like to lie to myself. So what I'm doing now is going in with my cold case cooling system. I call it a cooling system because it comes with a radiator cap, it comes with the shroud, the fans, everything you need to put this into your car and wire it up and make it for a good, efficient cooling system. The cold case radiator, it fit perfect fit like a glove, really. It's a little wide, so I did have to remove the rubber from the top mounts and modify the top mounts to hold it down. I'm gonna go back with a piece of slither of rubber just to give it some cushion so it doesn't rub against the metal on metal deal on the top of the radiator. It worked out really nice though. Now I'm gonna take out the wire harness completely that ran the old 302 push rod. The computer that lives in the passenger side kick panel will also be removed. Then I can continue adapting on the new fuel injection system that comes with the Coyote engine.
man, this is a lot of work, but it's in. The Coyote engine's in, the cold case radiator's in, the power by the hour front runner system's in. Now all I gotta do is next week, I'm gonna install the TKX from American Powertrain. This thing's gonna look really good once it's done. It needs a little bit of detailing. And if you guys want your car to look good, make sure to check out Mike Chapani and Elite Ceramic Coating and Restoration. Be sure to check out Sam's Garage on these other media platforms. Send us questions and feedback to info at samsgaragetv.com. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Sam's Garage. Locar installed a new throttle cable kit on a competition dragster. Doug's new Celine Mustang project is just getting started. Sam's going to help Phil take his Cutlass to the next level. And there is plenty more in store for the Fox Body Mustang.